Hey guys, welcome to my fibers and fabric series. In this video, part one, I'll be talking about some common materials that you likely have or will come across and what the pros and cons are for both everyday use and the environmental impact. Part two will be about vegan synthetic versus animal materials and part three will be all about upcycled and recycled materials, so definitely check those out as well. So first up is cotton, and I'll include time codes below for the different materials if you want to jump ahead or reference certain ones. Cotton is probably the most common fabric, and it's a natural fiber, it comes from the cotton plant, and it is soft breathable, meaning that air can move through it and moisture can evaporate through it. Easy to clean, it's machine washable. Absorbent, versatile. There's tons of different kinds of cotton materials and garments. It's good for people with allergies or skin sensitivities. The cons are that it doesn't hold dye really well, so it fades over time and can also bleed while being washed. It wrinkles. It can shrink in hot water, especially the first time it's washed. The environmental pros are that it is biodegradable, and the environmental cons are that it needs a lot of water to grow. It's also usually bleached and chemically treated and dyed. Cotton also has one of the highest pesticide uses for crops, and it's generally GMO as well. But these two things are prevented by purchasing organic cotton. Next is linen, and it's another natural material. It comes from the flax plant, and it was used all the way back in ancient Egypt. And linen as a fiber is breathable, durable, lightweight, absorbent. It's generally very cool and good for summertime. I also read that it's antimicrobial, but I wasn't able to find very in-depth information to back that up. The cons are that it wrinkles easily, it often requires gentler or hand washing, and sometimes there is fake linen or linen look material, and so you have to be careful of that. The environmental pros are that it requires little pesticides and water to grow, especially compared to cotton, and it is biodegradable. And the cons are that it can sometimes be dyed with toxic chemicals, but it depends on how it's made. Another plant fiber is hemp, and it comes from the cannabis plant, but a type that's only used for hemp production. And as a fiber, it is durable, absorbent, it becomes softer with wear and washing, it's breathable, and it can also be hypoallergenic. The cons are that it can sometimes be rough, it wrinkles, and different countries sometimes have very strict laws around growing and processing hemp, so there are difficulties around that with hemp fabric production. The environmental pros are that it doesn't require pesticides or lots of water to grow. It doesn't deplete nutrients from the soil, so it's a really good crop. It is biodegradable, and because it's very durable, the garments usually last long, and for environmental cons, I really couldn't find anything. It's basically seen as being the most eco-friendly material. Then there's polyester, which is likely the most common synthetic fiber. It's made from petrochemicals and is wrinkle resistant, durable, it dries quickly, it's color fast, machine washable, it tends to retain its shape well, and it's cheap. The cons are that it doesn't breathe, which can also cause it to become smelly. It builds up static, and it can also irritate the skin. An environmental pro is that it can be recycled, but this does require another chemical process. And the environmental cons are that it doesn't biodegrade. Fibers come off of it when it's being washed, and those end up polluting the ocean. It's energy intensive and very polluting to make. Toxic chemicals are used to make it, and it's also very difficult to dye, which requires a lot of chemicals. Then we have wool. Wool is a natural protein fiber, like your hair, and it mainly comes from sheep, but can also come from alpacas, goats, and other animals. Wool as a fiber is very warm. It's even warm when wet, water resistant, durable, very absorbent, flame resistant, and hypoallergenic. The cons are that it shrinks in hot water. It must be hand washed or dry cleaned. It can pill. And depending on the kind of wool, it can be itchy or irritating to the skin. The environmental pros are that it's easily dyed, which usually means there are less harsh chemicals used. It's biodegradable, and because it's very durable, it means that the garment will usually wear really well and can be kept for a long time. 
The environmental cons are that because it comes from an animal, there are issues and concerns around the treatment and care and well-being of those animals. And I will talk more about that in part two. Toxic chemicals and pesticides can also be used and this can be avoided by looking for organic wool. Next is acrylic, which is a synthetic petrochemical fiber. It was developed to be a man-made alternative to wool and it is lightweight, soft, color fast, machine washable, and cheap. The cons are that it tends to pill easily, it doesn't breathe, it builds up static. For the environmental pros, I really couldn't find anything. And the cons are that it doesn't biodegrade, it's not easily recycled, there are toxic chemicals used to make it, it's energy intensive, and again, fibers wash off from it that end up polluting the oceans. Then there's silk, which is a natural protein fiber. It comes from the cocoon of the silkworm, and it is very soft, it has a natural sheen, it's lightweight, has a good drape, so it generally looks very nice in clothing, and it's often good for very sensitive skin. The cons are that it's expensive, it requires hand washing or dry cleaning, it's not very durable, and it's susceptible to discoloration from sunlight or perspiration. The environmental pros are that it is biodegradable and it dies very easily. And the environmental cons are that the silkworms are actually killed in the process of harvesting the silk from the cocoons, so it is not at all a ethical or vegan material. Next is nylon, another synthetic made from petrochemicals. It was developed to be a synthetic replacement for silk, and it is strong, weather resistant, versatile, water repellent, machine washable, it dries quickly, and it's cheap. The cons are that some types of nylon build up static, it can irritate skin. The environmental pros are that it is a pretty durable material, so the garment will usually last a long time. And for the cons, like with polyester, fibers come off when it's washed that end up polluting the oceans. Toxic chemicals are used to make it. There are a lot of harmful emissions. It's energy intensive and it's not biodegradable. Then there's spandex, also called elastane or lycra. It's a very elastic fiber, also made from petrochemicals, and it's usually found blended with other fibers. It is stretchy, it helps clothes retain their shape, and it can help with fit. The cons are that it breaks down over time, it can also become brittle and yellow. The environmental pros are that it can help make clothes not stretch out, and the environmental cons are that it doesn't biodegrade, it's energy intensive and polluting to make, and toxic chemicals are used. Finally, there's a few naturally derived synthetic fibers. The first I'll talk about is rayon, and it's primarily made from a wood pulp that goes through a chemical process. And as a fiber, it's soft, inexpensive, absorbent, anti-static unlike other synthetic materials. The cons are that it's not very durable, it tends to pill, it wrinkles, it loses strength when wet and can easily become misshapen, and it also shrinks very easily. I actually couldn't really find any environmental pros for rayon, except for the fact that it uses less toxic chemicals than other synthetics, but they're still toxic chemicals, so I still see that as a con. Because it's a wood pulp, it can contribute to deforestation, and it's energy intensive to make, there's also bamboo, and the majority of bamboo is actually bamboo viscose or bamboo rayon, and countries have different laws about whether or not it has to be labeled as viscose derived from bamboo or bamboo rayon, but basically it's the same process as rayon, but instead of using wood pulp, they use bamboo. And as a fiber, it is soft, breathable, very absorbent, and also doesn't build up static. The cons are that like rayon, some bamboo fabrics will pill really easily. And like I mentioned, different countries have different rules as to how it's supposed to be labeled, so that can be confusing. The environmental pros are that bamboo is very renewable to grow and requires little water and pesticides. And the cons are that there are still toxic chemicals used to make the material. And it's energy intensive, and the last fiber I'm going to talk about is lyocell or tencel, and it's another naturally derived synthetic made from wood pulp. And it is soft, very absorbent, 
resistant to wrinkles, versatile, durable, breathable, anti-static, and also claims to be hypoallergenic. The cons are that it can pill easily and also sometimes needs special care. The environmental pros are that it is biodegradable. It's made in a closed loop system, so the chemicals are recycled and it's much less toxic to produce than other synthetics and natural synthetics like rayon. The cons are that it still uses quite a bit of energy to produce, and because it does come from wood pulp, it could also contribute to deforestation, but overall, it is the most environmentally friendly synthetic material. So of course, there are also other materials than the ones I've mentioned, and you'll also likely find a lot of blends. And blends can combine the benefits of both materials, but it can also negate some of them. For example, a polyester cotton blend will mean that the item is no longer biodegradable. As you probably noticed, no material is perfect, and it's just about trying your best to make informed decisions, and also choosing the right material for the function of the garment. I personally try to stick with natural materials for both comfort and environmental reasons, but it doesn't make sense all the time. For example, with swimwear, it makes much more sense to have something that doesn't absorb water and dries quickly. So I hope you found this interesting and maybe learned something. Please let me know in the comments if there are any pros or cons that I missed. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.